out in the forest of treasure and I'm trying to find a lost road because there's a Roman road, which I think is a Roman road up there. Might not be a Roman road, but I did find one Roman coin on it. And it just stops about half a mile up there. But I'm trying to find the direct line because it's a Roman road, it would have gone straight on. But there's no sign of it around here. So I'm hunting for it and hoping to find some interesting finds. So come along with me and join me on the lost road of treasure. No trace of the road, doesn't mean it's not here, it just means it's too deep. The only signal I've got is, is barbed wire fence retainers and this tiny little lead piece of shot. And that might be my adventure to this afternoon. It's very hot in here, really nice. Probably getting bitten to death, I'll find that out later. We're going to be pressing on and see what else we can turn up. It won't take much. Well, could that be a Roman hob now? I don't know. It's a nail and it's short and it's hobbish. Pop that in the pocket and concentrate around here because well you know what I'm searching for and it's going to be nearby if it's anywhere. Pig slang slug. I must be in America. It's hot and not not finding anything. Anyway I found this round ball that's about it for two hours just one round ball. Well, it's been hours, and I found zip, nil, zilch, nada, naught, nothing. But this is my excited face. This is my excited face. You're still going to see my sad face. But this is my excited face. It's been a hard dig, but I got an edge, and the edge is exciting. It's going to be a bottle top or something like that. But it's exciting. It's exciting. Come and have a look. So you see that edge there, well it's flat and it was 86 so you know I'm not going to say what it could be, you can see the silvery colour yourself, but of course chances of it being a silver coin are very very low, but look it is round and it was quite deep, but it's going to be four and I can't really undo it with one hand. Well, if it just bend it, if it doesn't bend, it might be my friend. And if it bends, well, we know what it is. And we'll know what it isn't. No, it's not bending. And it doesn't want to be helped out of its little cocoon. That's a bit better. Oh, it's a coin. That is definitely a coin. And it's going to be a rubbish coin. Can't tell what it is. And it does have a silver edge. It's very light, so I'm guessing it's going to be like a nonsense inflation money coin. But anyway, I found a coin. I can go back now. Ah, and who knows, it might wash up to be a silver coin. I'm very, very, very sceptical. I think it says five there. Well, maybe it doesn't. And, yeah, there we are. It's a thick edge. It's not a thin edge. Which means... It is not a mood. It is a clad. But anyway, starting to give up all hope. But found a coin. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm going back to the car, and I think I've got a coin. And there it is. Ah, so two coins now, in many hours. Oh, nice condition. Oh yes, nice condition. Don't rub the coin! Oh. So this road was definitely in use in 1700s. Because once you get off the road, I'm not getting anything. Well that might be just purely because the Undergrowth is too deep, but uh, I think it's more likely they just weren't going into the forest. So I'm out in the forest of treasure. Now I'm getting a kind of psychogeographical feel for this place now. So I've learned that, for example, this bit that I'm on was actually an old road that went down the hill and down to another town. It's not there anymore, but if you look at it on the map, 
and you take a look at it as you go, you can work it out that that's what it was in the past. And it's by the side of a sand quarry. And I'm going to be walking up this now, but I'm going to a set of quarries, shallow quarries, that I think are pretty ancient and are probably sand quarries too. And I'm hoping there's going to be finds around the edges of the pits. The pits aren't very deep, you know, sort of eight, ten foot deep. Not the sort of thing that you could fall into badly. You could roll down a bit of a hill maybe. But anyway, that's where I'm heading for. And hopefully by the time I get there, I won't be too tired to actually struggle around it. <laughs> but I might find some stuff on the way. But off we go. Come with me and see what we can find. Thank you for getting to do this. I've got a cooking channel and it's quite fun. I don't do many videos on it because I'm not monetized. I was, but they demonetized me, and I get about a quarter of the necessary traffic to get monetized. So I do about a thousand hours a year, which, you know, if it was on this channel, would be a hundred or two dollars. So it's actually, you know, a meaningful amount of money I'm not getting. But if I can get past four thousand hours, then I'll be monetized. So if you care to go along and see me cooking, mainly with truffles and funky mushrooms, please do, because it'd be lovely to get monetized. I'd love to have a reason to make more videos and you see more of me, because when it's raining and I can't go trash hunting, I can always do cooking, can't I? So if you like what I do, like how I present, enjoy my company, then please nip over to Mushroom Hunting. There's a link below to that channel and have a watch of the few videos and help me get over 4,000 hours so I can get monetized. See you over there. And there's one more thing. Boring, isn't it? Get on with the treasure hunting. Get on digging, man. I'm going to do a shout out. I'm going to do shout outs for other people's channels at the beginning because there's a lot of good channels out there. And I know how incredibly difficult it is to get any oxygen for people to find you on the modern YouTube, which basically shuts out small channels like ours and makes room for the big channels, which are boring and rubbish. So anyway, my shout out today is to Tom's bottle digging channel. So that's bottle digging Tom. He does fantastic bottle digging adventures. And again, there's a link below for bottle digging Tom, who is just the most amazing digger you've ever seen. I mean, he's just like a miner in these bottle dumps. And it's really, really exciting watching him do his thing. Anyway, off we go. Born to be wild. I'm on the cleared forest. And it's either going to be amazing or it's going to be nothing at all. So first find of the day, a boar killing slug. Or should I just say, a hairy pig slaying slug. Here's the curse of the two twos. Well, I've walked all that way from the top of the corner to here and got a couple of bullets as you've seen, but I've got a find at last. And I think we're coming up to a road, which I think is just there. And most of this is looking like it's never had anybody on it. Well, not many people anyway, so this is it. It's a button and it's a, ooh. Is that a silver? Can't be, it's a funny color. I think it's actually enamel. It's an enamel button. So that's rather nice. Because some of the people around here would have been the local gentry shooting. Well, not so local gentry shooting. So it would have decent quality buttons on, as you saw in the last video or two. But no, that's a sort of paste and it's rubbing away. Don't know what that is, but anyway, we'll find out when we clean it up. A button. So here's another round ball. It's a fairly large amount of wire and cartridges in here and shotgun bits. As you can imagine, it's forestry after all. But we're looking for that elusive hotspot. Well, you may have noticed in treasure hunting videos that a lot of people are going <laughs> while they're talking <laughs> to <laughs> you. Well, some of them may be fat and unfit like me. But also, they've probably been at it for two or three hours, and it's, you know, quite a lot of exercise. So I've been at it for two or three hours, and I got my first find. <laughs> and it's worth all the <laughs> for it. Anyway, have a look. Well, it's good news, because that means this road is worth returning to. And it also means it's an old road, because that is going to be a Louis the Whatnot. That's my guess. And it's a copper. There's probably not going to be much to see on it, unfortunately. But you can see it's pretty round, but it's not 
like round like a modern coin but it's not odd shaped like a Roman don't rub the coin well it ain't gonna make a great deal of difference in fact it probably won't make any now whether I can actually show you what actual coin it is by rubbing the coin I don't, I don't know but I should give it a little bit of a going at and I'll get back to you now you can see more of this than I can I haven't really cleaned all of what I could clean off it just by rubbing it on my trousers but that's looking like Louis XVI and that's going to be or well, maybe even Louis XV or XIV but probably either Louis XV or XVI and that's going to be a six dernier so those tiny little coins I find this is a six one of them although I'm looking at it now and it's looking like potentially a revolutionary one although I can't really see the Hat of Liberty on this bust it just has a slightly Marianne-ish look no I don't think it is I think it's Louis the 16th, Louis the Decapitated there might even be a date there oh hold on a minute this angle it definitely does look like Marianne so this is going to be a five song team with a revolution so they're coming up down here looking for Aristos to decapitate when this coin was dropped and who knows there might be some nearby I'm going to go and have a look Now that is an old road, you can see where they've worn down by coming down here, that whole groove, which is, I don't know, six, seven foot. So anything they drop should be in the bottom of that, you would have thought. Well, let's see, shall we? It's hard to believe, but not one signal, not un, not ein, zero. Instead I found a pile of logs. Anyway, we're going to press on and see what we come across. One nice coin. That's, that's kind of good enough, really. But let's hope we can find that elusive hotspot. A slug. Well, not a slug. A case. Plenty of that around here. Oh, a silver coin of the Cronenberg tribe. One for the pocket knot. Well, Monsieur Tutu, drop one. Now, this is the workings. You see, there's all holes and it's all lumpy and bumpy. I think it's probably a sand working, it's a whole area. Hold the camera still, boy. The whole area is like this. And I'm hoping that the lumps will have things on them where people sat down after they've been digging. You know, there's a chance. We will find out shortly. Meanwhile, this does not go in the pocket. And there you go. Made harmless. Oh, this is my excited face. This is my excited face. It's going to be a ball top. But if it's not, it's a fantastic find. Okay, now. Now, I've got to do this properly. Otherwise, we just be, oh, I found this. Oh, oh, isn't it good? Goodbye. So, I've been through these workings, and there's nothing there. Mr. Tutu has been there a couple of times, but that's about it. And these are sand workings, I believe, and the whole area has been dug out. It's like trenches. But anyway, nothing. And I'm tired, to say the least, because I am not a marathon runner anymore. And I haven't really been doing much because of the lockdown and the weather. But occasionally, I've been out and about, and you've seen that. With, I'll show it to you, my permission. You have to fill in a document and say you're going to go for an exercise or you go shopping or whatever. Anyway, that all finishes on Monday and I'm on a friend's land and about as far away from another human being as you possibly get in addition to being totally pucker in what I'm doing. So, anyway, down here is a glint of gold which means it must be a bottle top. But I haven't touched it yet and I'm hoping it's not a bottle top. Please there'll be a bottle top but I'm going to get down on my knees for you. Oh, because I, uh, I was ready to give up. Anyway, let's have a look. So that is what I'm seeing. Now, I'm not just going to pick it up. I'm going to get right down to it and find out it's a washer or something. Ugh. But for me, right now, I think that's a big, fat gold ring. It's got to be, isn't it? 
Anyway, <laughs> that's, and that was the hole it was in. And this is how I flicked it out, just to, oh, it's definitely gold. It's really heavy. Oh yeah. Oh yes. And it's got an initial on it. It might not actually be gold. It's heavy, but maybe not that heavy. It might actually be gold plate, but I don't really care. Well, I do care, but I don't care too much because there's my actually there's my video right here <laughs> yeah no look it's plate yeah i think it's plate it's a junk ring but anyway i'm very happy with that not solid 18 carat or 9 carat gold but still a nice find <sighs> well at least there's some treasure around here I'm starting to give up hope well i've got a nice coin and i've got this ring so that's two nice things in about mm, hours Anyway, back off home now, because this is a good note to end on. And a coin. Now this is somewhere near where I found that ring. But it's not dropped by the same person because there's a couple of hundred years between this coin and that ring. So that's going to be the classic denier. Eaten away by the acid of all the humus. Humus, humusanatic, humanic acid, I don't know, something like that. You know, in the pocket it goes, it won't be identifiable. But basically, anything that's not in the 80s with this little coil is going to be wire or foil or a bit of a shotgun cartridge. You have to get into the 80s for it to really to be worth digging, but I've been digging a lot of trash just in case. Well, it should be a coin. I'm gonna give it a live poke, because I don't know what it is yet. Could well be a bullet case. And there it is, I think I can see it. There's the coin. And this is the second coin within a few feet after hours of finding nothing. And nothing's deep here because the subsoil is so close to the surface. So anything you drop falls to that and then stops. And quite often it's sand. So that coin, 250 years old, two inches deep. Yeah, so I mean back with the video of Nugget Noggin finding all those coins and saying, it's not deep, it's not deep. That's because this whole forest, the finds are really shallow, thank goodness. And you just never find much deep. Occasionally you find a bullet, but you never find anything at six or eight or nine inches. Generally, it's almost on the surface, which is very convenient.